do. Jim Gentile is here in her in her absence. Four counsel, John James and, and Joe Titran are here as well. Um, and I wanted to just kind of discuss the path forward. I will, I do want to inform people on the, on the front end is uh, I do have a, a, a calendar conflict and uh, Majority Leader Blaine Griffin will be taking over at the time that I have to, that I have to move out. But I want to, uh, I've got some documents that I want uh, people to take a look at and then I want to uh, start with Just to refresh everybody on where we've been and where we're going. All right. Okay. So, uh, as everybody knows, the American Rescue Act plan became law on March 11, 2021, and there was a. We did not quite get the criteria. The criteria was kind of, kind of an evolving uh, list from Treasury after that. Um, we, we as council had to pass legislation whereby we would apply for and accept the American Re the ARPA dollars, the, the first half that came to us. So we passed ordinance number 303, 2021 to accept those funds. Um, on 510 of this year, we received some, some preliminary information from treasury on what is the, what are allowable uses. Uh, sub fund one, 15190 was set up for the to receive the funds and uh, the requested use of the funds. Uh, there was a interim final rule was received on 517 of this year um, and an application was submitted to receive the funds. Uh, on 527 there was an update updated F, uh, FAQ on allowable uses of ARPA dollars. On 6-1 of this year, we received the first tranche of dollars, which came the amount of $255,860,795. Um, then we had a different request started coming in. EMS had a request for use of funds, um, description of programs. There was a draft. We had solicited uh, requests to hear from members of council in terms of how are these dollars, how do you believe this should be used? The intent was that you would talk to your residents and we would set forth. Um, all council members did submit something. Um, no council members failed to submit anything. So everybody submitted something and uh, John James took all of the information that was suggested by council and uh, put it into different categories and you know started disseminating that and having conversations about that. Um, again, then again, on 6-8 and 6-10, we received updated information from Treasury on what was allowable. John James met with administration to put forth our requests for ARPA dollars on 6-14. Um, we received a draft of council requested use of funds on, we received compliance guidelines on 6-17. I'm gonna fast forward to the important stuff. Um, received another updated FAQ on 719. On 723, an online survey was launched um, to all Cleveland residents in terms of how they believe these dollars should be used. Um, but because the, of the digital divide, we couldn't rely on just online information. Uh, additional surveys were put at rec centers and sent out via US mail. They were collected at the rec centers um, on 8-2, the first batch came in. Um, safety's combined list came in. Request for broadband legislation. Request from food bank legislation. Uh, continued to pick up the boxes from uh, drop boxes of the surveys. Safety request for CAD system police records. Um, submitted a recovery plan to Treasury and posted on city's website on 8-27. Um, submitted Recovery plan to Treasury, um, ordinance number 691-21, uh, broadband access was, was introduced uh, on 9-1. Ordinance number 681-21, the Cleveland Food Bank uh, support was introduced. More requests came in. Uh, those ordinances were, were heard and approved. And then legislation was presented for ARPA spending citywide. 
Um, in addition to that, we have had the council meetings. We had an initial briefing before we knew what was going on in, in March when this started coming together. Um, we've had uh, an additional meeting where we've had two meetings recently. Where's my little cheat sheet? All right, lost my cheat sheet, I'll get you the dates. Um, but we had, uh, we had additional meetings when we talked about the, Pat, do you have? You have to speak directly into the mic or the viewers will not be able to hear you. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Everyone, All right, I'm gonna repeat everything I just said. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Um, but you know, most recently, we had a conversation amongst council members in terms of how we start moving things forward, and uh, that was just amongst us. I did not invite administration. Um, Councilman Plenzik and others believe that it was important that the director of finance be here because they are the ones that have the, the, the staff and the resources to better advise. We had a secondary, uh, excuse me, a follow-up meeting to that where we had the finance director and uh, and chief of staff here with us to, to go over ARPA dollars and what the uh, what the what the process was, and now we're at a point where we are going to move forward, and we've moved forward on two of the of the priority items that were you know, not ambiguous in terms of the um, in terms of what the language of the of the ARPA dollars was. That being broadband access and food insecurity, um, and now we are. An ordinance has been put forth that brought, that integrated our, our request into that. And it is something that is gonna go through you know, committee process and nothing that has a dollar value over $50,000 can happen without going through council and going through the, the committee process. So that's just kind of a, uh, you know, a, a timeline of where we've been and, and where we're going. And uh, what we're gonna do moving forward is set up, because it's hard to come to decisions in, in, a, in a, having with 17 people all together and not focusing on, on one issue, but we're gonna put together a working group of council that, that we're gonna staff and we're gonna have the chairs of, of finance, of safety, of DPS, of health, of municipal services, and of utilities be on that committee and anybody will be welcome to join that, but to try to drive some conclusion of these dollars and frame out what this is going to look like going forward. And Kevin Connell. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're more, more than welcome to be there. So that is the, uh, where we are now. What I'd like to do real, what I'd like to do is I want to um, ask um, Jim Gentile to give a, just a whatever I missed in terms of the ARPA dollars and what the, you know, what the, the intent is of the ordinance that was put forward. And then I just want to hear from our staff and then uh, we will we'll kind of go from there. But Jim, if you can just give us uh, the, where you see the, where the, when the dollars have come in, what has been allocated, what has been, oh, I, I missed one very important thing. Revenue recovery is an, a critical part of all this, and that is another act that we took was to, to put forth the revenue recovery that we lost because of COVID. But with that, um, Jim, if you could just give us uh, your your view, you kind of like the highlights of where you see where we've been and where we're going and how this ordinance that has been introduced, um, what's behind it, what are the subcategories behind it? Yeah, yeah to the chairman and to the committee, uh, I think the timeline that you gave is, you know, pretty detailed, pretty accurate, so I don't really have anything to add to the timeline. I think that's, um, you know, pretty much uh, complete. Now, as far as the, the ordinance that's out there, um, we have the uh, 26.3 million for public safety. It's primary, primarily vehicles, equipment, um, some cameras for security. And when we did the plan, uh, uh, when you look at the timeline, we looked at public input, administration input, council input mm -hmm. before we developed this. So we, we looked at all of those items mm -hmm. Um, and the ones that you've seen, the ones that we've seen repeated quite a bit or, or there was a, a lot of requests for are, are kind of how we structured this. Um, we, we also have $15 million in uh, strategic demo. We have uh, 191,000 targeted for professional services to help administer this. We're gonna be getting a, uh, 
a compliance expert, Mr. a firm Chairman. to How help much us. is that? It's 191,000 in total. Mr. To do what? To, to do help the city with the compliance of the dollars to make sure that what we're going to program it for is not gonna, that is uh, under the guidance. Okay. And then we have 80.3 million that's in CD and ED programs and, and there's, there's three you know, major areas. One is lending pools for development, home repair, storefront. Um, we have a grant grant pools for pre-development grants, down payment assistance, home repair grants, rental, food, rental and food assistance, and lead safe housing. And the last area is strategic investment, which is affordable housing, neighborhood economic development, as well as minority and women um, assistance, contractor assistance. Mr. Chairman, just one additional yeah. Do you have a handout you I can? Have my uh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's my cheat sheet. <laughs> okay, but there is there a document that has these uh, these sub, um, in, that has the different amounts? Is it in the? Uh, to the chair, to the councilman. Yes, there's a there's a document that has some of the, there's several documents that have okay. these from the request that came in. We're going to be here for a minute. Can you ask somebody from your staff to copy that and bring it down? Uh, sure. That's no okay. Or if they happen to be watching, if somebody could yeah, uh, get okay. a copy of that and bring it down, it would be appreciated. Oh, okay. Mr. That's Chair, true. I'm wondering if um, the legislation has some of that. I don't know if it has The legislation does. does yeah. it, is, it, is, it, broad. is it broad or does it have the specifics like in terms it, it of like the vehicle safety? I recall it, it being broad, but I don't have it in front it, of me. It, okay. it was broad. It, did, it, it wasn't specific. Okay. It wasn't. Okay. Just this. Okay. Perfect. So if somebody could bring that down with some more detail, that'd be helpful. Okay. okay. So please keep going. Um, yeah, that, 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 that is the entire amount. So I've got safety, demo, professional services, and then um, a number of uh, CDED type of developments, um, lead, home repair, storefront. What else is in that? Okay, it's lend the CDED part is a lending pools development. Home, home repair and storefront is part of that. And you have the grant capital pools, which is okay. pre-development grants, down payment assistance, home repair grants, rental and food assistance grants, lead safe housing grants, and the strategic investment piece is the affordable housing, neighborhood economic development, minority and women owned business assistance. Okay, is there anything in that, that fourth bucket where there's, um, that deals with more of the food insecurity um, that COVID has caused? To the chair, to the council, I think the rental and food assistance, there's a piece that's a grant okay. uh, that, that's gonna cover some of that. And do you know the number? Um, we, we have not affixed all, all the numbers directly to these yet. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on final determination. The final rules for the grant are now, we've had several updates if you went over in the, uh, in the timeline, but the final, final guidance is, should be coming soon. We're going to re-examine all these just to make sure that mm -hmm. you know we're, we're right on the eligibility on every one of these uses. Okay, and then um, in the in the housing, is I, I noticed that there isn't a lead um, number category. Like there's nothing that's in there right now. Is that accurate? No. Uh, to the to the council chair, uh, there is a lead safe piece that we're putting in here. Okay, but it's not both. it's it's not currently contemplated. Is that? Or is it just, is it broad enough to include that? Uh, it's under the grant area. We're considering the okay. lead safe housing. Okay, very good. Yes. Um, we have safety of uh, food and security. Jenny Spencer has a point. So. Do you have a point on that? Or I, I just have a, qu a question, Mr. Chair. Um, do you want me to put you on the list or is it specific to something you said? I just want him to get through his. Uh, um, I didn't hear the numbers for the lending pools and the strategic investment. Thank you. Do you know the numbers for lending pool and strategic investment? Yeah, the total is 80.3 for all those programs combined. Um, the, the list that we'll get will have a, a better breakout. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. So we're looking at um, the kind of the, the general buckets that we have, you know, talked about in council, you know, it comes down to, you know, food insecurity, public safety, broadband, um, housing, and everything 
is, is kind of in there, but we need to put some, uh, some concrete dollars behind you know, what, we're, you know, what we're doing moving forward. Um, do, do you have anything else on the, the timeline and, and what we are doing moving forward? Uh, to the count, to the chair and the, the rest of the committee. Um, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be waiting for the final guidance, which should be coming out very soon. It keeps getting slightly delayed by the Fed. Yeah. Um, then we're going to solidify the the um, that that we're in compliance with all the programs. Again, we we vetted these, we looked at these, we've sent things into the Feds, so we're pretty confident that most. I mean, all the programs that we're considering are in compliance with the grant guidelines. Um, there were some that we looked at that weren't, and, and we you know, did not include them. Um, so we're going to wait for that finalization, and we're going to start moving forward and bringing the programs you know, to council. Okay, and how do you, how do you envision this moving forward then with the ordinance that, that's been presented? Um, through the committee here, like how, when, when there is more specificity, what will that look like um, in terms of how we, we come to uh, decision on, on whether the yeah. number is approved yeah. or not approved. Yeah. To, to the chair and the, and the committee, what, I mean, I envision it would be going back to the committee meetings, you know, whichever committees that it would go through, and the discussion would be, you know, just like it, you know, the rest of the committee meetings are. Okay, very good. Um, okay, um, now before uh, we move to uh, John James, I want to ask John, um, I don't have the copies of the categories by we the the council request by categories is that on the is that in the copy room i have every i've got i've got joe's uh spreadsheet but not the by by uh bucket or by subject area okay i can get that yeah if we can get that as we as we continue because what i'd like to do is uh i'd like to take uh questions for uh, mr gentile and then i want to have uh John and Joe um, go over the council request and how those have been integrated into, you know, wherever we are now and what the plan is forward. So I do have four questions. I do have uh, Joe, uh, Councilman Joe Jones, and Councilman Mike Palencic, Councilman Kevin Conwell. Councilwoman Spencer, did you have an additional question or did that? Not at, not at this time. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go with Councilman, I can just kind of go down the line, uh, Councilman Joe Jones, Councilman Mike Plunzik, and Councilman Kevin Conwell. Mr. Chairman, I'll yield and, and take the second spot to um, the Dean of Council. Councilman Mike Plunzik. Well, th well, thank you, my honorable colleagues and colleague. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, first of all, I want to appreciate everyone who is here today at the table. Um, Mr. Chairman, to, um, to Mr. Gentile, um, what I, what I, what is important for us to understand, um, I'm looking at um, basic physics. For every action, there's a reaction. So these funds that we are receiving obviously have the potential to free up other city dollars, correct? To the, to the, from the chair to the council member, yes. Okay. So in the course of our discussions, what we need to have, we, under, we need to understand um, where we're freeing up city dollars. Um, and I need to understand as well, at, as of this point in time, where we have cash balances. What is our overall cash balance, Mr. Chairman, to, to Mr. Gentile? And, and not only... Can we make copies of that, Mr. Chairman? I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Sorry. You're good, you're no, that's all right. You got to do what you have to. Not only uh, general fund, but enterprise accounts as well, because um, I'm looking at at the um, at the prospects as we head toward the end of the year of having a cash balances, and that's very critical for this body, who who is going to be seated here going into next year into the budget round, what funds do we have available to us? So I want to say that there's a, to me, there's an integration here. It's between these funds and the general fund dollars and, um, and restricted, and, and excuse me, enterprise accounts. We need to understand that. As of this moment, um, I spoke to the food bank officials last week, uh, and they were unclear out Mr. Chairman to Mr. Gentile, how to access the funds that we set aside. Um, 
they were, they had, there's been no dialogue. So I, I indicated to the director of the Greater Cleveland Food Bank uh, to, um, to contact uh, Sharon because she indicated to me they're in the course of this um, construction project and um, they would, they would uh, like to um, forego having to borrow additional funds and if the five million is available to them now, that's going to assist them greatly in their um, in their operation. So, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Do you know the answer to that right now? Because that is an yeah. important uh, issue. Because time is of the essence yeah. with their yeah. construction to, schedule. To the chair of the council, no, but I, I'll definitely figure it out. Okay, I mean, we'll figure the, that the, one out. Okay, the legislation passed, so yeah, the legislation passed. Okay. definitely be able to assist so, them. And then that's where, where, I, where I want to take us to. I've tried to divide this, Mr. Chairman, of colleagues, low hanging fruit, and things that are more difficult. The broadband is going to be more difficult. It's not going to happen yesterday, tomorrow. We know there's, a, there's processes that have to be implemented. Maybe consultants have to be brought on. Um, there's going to be internal discussions. So I, I'm trying to picture in my, in my head where, where ultimately, what's the time frame on broadband? That's one thing. But there's some things that we should be able to do low-hanging fruit, like now. So demolition, we do it now. We do it every day. Well, I should not every day like we'd like to see it, but we're doing it every week, demolition to some degree. So how do we, how do we plug the monies? Uh, you're recommending 15 million, the administration's recommending 15 million, correct? To the, to the chair, to the councilman, yes. Yes. So I don't know if that's a figure that we're going to concur with around the table. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But how do we take those funds now and start to put them in the street? Question is, does the building, does the demolition bureau have the capacity to ramp up demolitions? I pose that to you. To the chair, to the councilman, yeah, they're aware, they're aware of this additional workload, so they're, they're ready to, you know, ramp up their demo program. So you're telling us right now that we could we could move funds into that direction and we could start to see the end result in the street in a matter of weeks. Thank you. To the chair, to the councilman, I mean, they use a lot of contractors. I don't know if it'd be weeks, but it would be, you know, fairly quickly. Okay. So you also said, Mr. Chairman, uh, you said strategic demolition. Would you care to define that? To the chair, to the councilman, based upon the ARPA funds, you have to use this in, in certain demographic neighborhoods or, or distressed neighborhoods. So you have to look at, is it eligible? So when you look at that, um, we're going to use the ARPA money where, we, where it's eligible, and then we'll shift some of our regular demo money to where ARPA okay. money is not eligible. So are you, are you at liberty to tell us where those targeted neighborhoods are? To the chair, we'll have to, to the chair to the council. I'll have to get back, you know, get you those areas. Okay, because let me tell you, we be very little. Every time I press the Bureau of Demolition and Building and Housing on properties that are deplorable, and you come up, we don't have the money, Councilman. We don't have the money. So when I hear strategic, I want to make sure that all of us who are having problems and needs that it get addressed to and that the quote unquote middle neighborhoods don't get excluded. I, they're, they're ne this is an opportunity for us to do things that we're never gonna have the ability to do again, in my opinion. So penny, penny wise, how we're spending our money, but to, to see those funds, the residents wanna see those funds in the street. They wanna see things happening. So again, to my honorable colleague, Let's try to identify the low-hanging fruit that we can address now, and then we know there's other things that are going to take time to if implement. I may, if I can just add a point yeah. to that, so if we're looking at um, you know four four thousand vacant abandoned homes that are, and I wish Councilman Brankatelli were here, but he needed an excused absence. Um, if we have four thousand vacant abandoned homes that are on the demo list, um, I mean we're going to need closer to forty than fifteen. To, to, to wipe out that balance. And to me, if something's bad enough to be on the demo list, it's strategic because it, it, it's 
you know, they don't just put anything on the demo list. So, but that's a point we'll come back to um, as this moves forward. Well, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. Mr. Chairman, I would just say this. My, this is my own opinion, and I deal with it every day. Not all those 4,000 homes need to come down. The problem is, is that our county um, has not foreclosed on many of these properties that could be put back in a productive use. So there's the other side of this equation. We need to, we need to bring the top county to the table to assist us. There's no, the, the tear down 4,000 houses today, I don't believe that's necessity. I don't believe that's, I don't see that the case of my own ward, but I do have some that need to come down like now and I'm tired of being told that we don't have the funds to do it. So, um, so again, let's, let's figure out how we can mesh both of our concerns at this table. The other part, Mr. Chairman, um, I want to touch on briefly, again, low-hanging fruit. We do have a senior assistance program now for homes to get repaired. Do they have the, Mr. Chairman to Mr. Gentile, do they have the capacity, if we were to put additional funds into that, do they have the capacity to do the additional home repairs? To the chair, to the uh, councilman, um, they, they will, if they don't, they will get additional con help to do that. Right now they use contractors and they, they use several different ones. So, you know, they, and if we have to add a person, uh, a head count to, to administer the program, that's, that's what we'll do. But right now we think we have enough staff members to administer this because the repairs are done by private contractors. Okay. Are there enough, may I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Are there enough contractors that are certified to do this work um, if we were to open up a, a pool of funding to really ramp up demo? Do they have, do they, does the private sector, the, those we contract with, do they have the capacity to get this work done immediately? Yeah, to the to the chairman, uh, we use several demo companies, so I think they have the capacity uh, to to do additional demos or, or cover this. Now, okay. definitely the fifteen. Yeah. Now, if you start getting higher, you know, we'd have to make sure that they do. But there's several companies that do demos for the city. Okay, and so, Mr. Chairman, I think that's and broadly, I think we have to understand where we have the capacity to do things now or within a period of weeks or months and where we don't have the capacity. That's gonna be important in this process because I wanna see things, I wanna see the money hit the streets. I wanna see things starting to happen. Um, so we need to understand from the administration because you, and I wanna say this because the people that are watching, council does not hire, we don't fire, we don't deploy, and we don't set policy. That's set by the administration. And so, but we need to know, understand, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, what are your capacities? What can you do and what can't you do? Or are you gonna to have to bring in outside folks to augment what we're doing already? We need to understand it, that has to be clear. We can't be talking about this a year down the pike. We need to understand where you have the capacity to act now and where you don't. So, again, on the broadband, you know, at some point, we're going to understand, Mr. Chairman, to the, the administration, what's going to be the path we're going down on the broadband. You're going to take care of the food bank, as you indicated, as soon as you can. Um, the demo and some of the other areas, um, the, the police security cameras, uh, which is in the, the, the number one category in the, in the mayor administration's um, uh, uh, request that they sent out for, for a comment, um, we have a safety and security program now. But the council's been very disappointed as it pertains to the implementation, because we're all asking where are they? So we need to understand if we plug additional money in there, Mr. Gentile, does the administration, do you folks have the ability to respond and act to, the, to put up the additional security cameras in our neighborhoods? To so the chair of the council, yes, we have a plan. It's the next phase of these safety cameras. So it, it's been in the works now that, now that we have ARPA funding um, to, to pay for it. So we should be, um, you know, ready to do that. Okay, we need, you know, we need definitive responses. We need a paper trail. We need to see, we were all asked, every member of this body was asked to put together a list for security cameras. We did that. The council responded, um, worked with our district commanders, and to, lo and behold, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So it can't be, it, 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 if, if there's commitments made at this table, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Gentile and the administration, 
those commitments have got to be delivered upon. It can't be it can't be an old pie in the sky crap anymore. It's got to, you guys got to deliver, because I'm not happy. I submitted my list. I work with my commander, myself, and Councilman Harrison, Councilman Conwell, the three of us out there on the northeast side, and those things didn't happen. And and our folks are disappointed, and, and we're disappointed. So. Let's figure out the mechanics, Mr. Chairman, of how we're going to get some of these things done. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. I, I just I want to stress again to my honorable colleagues here, um, let's separate the things that we can do like now, and let's separate on another track the things that are going to take more time to do. And so we can work on parallel tracks going down here and get things done as quickly as we can. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated like a lot of people, all of us who've been out listening, you know, um, listening what people are saying, they want to see the city attacking quality of life issues. That's what I hear daily. And last week when we had that crazy rain, a um, little over a week ago, I had over 12 calls of elderly people with leaking roofs. They're on Social Security. They cannot fix their roofs. They need help. And it's just not the elderly. It's the working poor. It's working families. If you, when, you, when you go door to door, as all of us, or the majority of us do around this table, and you see the conditions of some people's homes, you, it really hits home of what, what the need that's out there, the tremendous need that people have. They can't afford to fix their homes in this city. So I want to see some, I want to see a, a really a, a meaningful program to address housing insecurity in this city and housing problems. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. Uh, now I want to go back to Councilman Joe Jones for comments. I'm going to turn the gavel over to uh, Majority Leader Blaine Griffin. I have to step out for a minute. Mr. Chairman, thank you um, um, for chairing the session. It is my understanding, um, first, in terms of having a session, we've been here before, and that is having the administration talk about uh, what they saw as the priorities from the citizens with an assessment, and but we did not get that assessment. We had to request for it. Uh, at the table during the time uh, that uh, the presentation was being made. And in that, uh, there was a um, uh, information gathered across the city of Cleveland of what they felt that the priority should be in terms of use of those funds. And then we had a session, Mr. Chairman, with the council um, talking about what they felt were the priorities and we had it over a Zoom session but we never talked about, nor did we ever take the time to do what this body has done in the past. Uh, and that is have a very meaningful discussion about how the $500 million should be spent in the city of Cleveland. And meaningful discussions, Mr. Chairman, is uh, having uh, pulled the council to the side with a summit and really started to breaking down how these dollars should be spent. And I thought the purpose of this meeting was not to have a fly-by-night presentation of which Mr. Chairman, with no disrespect to the distinguished gentleman here, he has written notes about where he would like or where the administration would like to see um, these funds allocated. Nothing is prepared, nothing is assembled for the council to have a review on. And here yet we go again with no real sense of transparency and when we're talking about a city of the city size of the city of Cleveland, and we're talking about 17 distinct communities, uh, the council as a whole has not had the time to really sit down uh, and really start working through this process to see what our priorities are in our respective communities. Some of us, and I know to you, Mr. Chairman, as well as I have had community community sessions, I know that another other council members have you know, noted too that they've had meetings in their wards with their citizens to talk about how the funds are spent. 
So when we sit here and we look at the timeline that you have in terms of those resources, uh, my question, Mr. Chairman, where did we get that timeline from? Is that a timeline coming from the administration uh, that we were handed out today, or was that a timeline that was put together by our team? Councilman, to um, answer your question, that timeline was put together by John James and the um, council to really go over the path that we've actually um, taken in order to have um, discussions on these dollars. And, and I know, Mr. Chairman, looking at that, I, I was not aware of any of those things with the exception of three of those um, pieces that, that were on that timeline. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm not, you know, sure that you know, uh, at the end of the day, um, the council needs to have a summit. And, um, and the purpose of this meeting is to talk about that. I think to try to hash back and forth um, different projects uh, that my distinguished colleague Mike Polensic is talking about. We've always had those meetings where we've had those summits and we talked about all the, the particulars and the details. I don't think that we have the time um, here to do that. Um, at this table, I think what we need to do is set up a meeting. Uh, we need to have the discussion, and I'm quite sure uh, we can make a motion here at the table to have a summit uh, to talk about this this issue. Uh, and you know, and I know that the you know a, a number of us who signed this, uh, what we were thinking about was the purpose of the meeting is to present a plan for Cleveland City Council to engage in a transparent process that will establish a clear understanding of how ARPA funding can be used, create a comprehensive plan of council priorities, and finally reconcile council's priorities with the mayor's proposal. So all of the members of the 17 uh, communities need to talk about what they feel that their priorities are in their respective territories, and then talk about how we can marriage that priorities that we have here and what collectively uh, we have in common to then begin the process to deliberate that with the administration. But right now, that hasn't taken place. Uh, the council has not had a, a meeting to do such. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, before I proceed, I would like to make a motion on this table that the council has a summit to talk about what are the allowable expenditures um, of this particular AARP. Because we just got through hearing, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Gentile talk about there's limitations on how these funds can be used. Now, it's my understanding, Mr. Chairman, that there's some cities, they don't have limitations. They're doing all sorts of things with the funds. And some of them, Mr. Chairman, is quite out interesting because I didn't think that they could use those kind of funds to do some of the programming that they're doing in their respective territories. So, Mr. Chairman, you know, I make a motion um, that we have a full session if that's three days or four days to, to start hashing out this as we have done in the past. Uh, and and uh, my distinctive colleague, Mike Polensic, used to be there when we used to go out to Burke Lake Airport and hash out uh, how block grant money was going to be spent. And as in the subject matter you're talking about, how demolition and funds should be allocated, uh, as well as how uh, a number of priorities we see at the table need to be talked about, go back and forth until we have a, a real marriage of the program. And in, and in a, a nutshell, we cannot, Mr. Chairman, with this one-time amount of $500 million, not look at advancing our city and moving it forward. We carry the dubious distinction of being the poorest city in this nation. And we can't sit here and continue to just not go through a transparent process, not be on the same page, and not advocate for the citizens we represent. And one of those priorities, Mr. Chairman, you know, as for me, I know my colleague talks about his priorities. One that is a priority for my neighborhood is economic development. Uh, for a community such as the Lee Harbor War One area, we need to have the same kind of investments that other neighborhoods have enjoyed over the last 20 years. And Mr. Chairman, we also need to have police visibility and availability. I haven't heard anything about uh, adding funds to increase personnel, to get more police on the ground, uh, nor have I I've seen a number of initiatives that I should and I would like to see. And so, Mr. Chairman, um, 
uh, I make that motion that we have a, a series of summits, uh, and if that means that we succinctly have them three to four days in a row, uh, like we did in the days of, of black grant hearings, we need to have hearings on these funds. And we need to have hearings, our, our first day, or at least a half a day, should be talking about uh, the allowable uses of, of these funds. So there's a motion, Mr. Chairman, that I put on the floor. I just need to get a second. Is there a second? I'll second that motion, Councilman. That's what, that's what, um, is there clarity on the summit? Can you give more clarity, Councilman? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, May I have discussion on the motion? We, yes, Mr. Chairman. I yes, will please I'll allow that discussion if you could. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate that. And just a discussion on the motion by Councilman Jones. Um, again, I submitted an agenda in advance of this meeting as well as a uh, proposal, whether it be a summit, Councilman Jones, or a series of meetings, whatever the language is that we're interested in using here. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I support that, uh, that motion to have a summit or some sort of series of meetings. Again, I think the reason we're here today uh, is because there's a feeling amongst the body that we have not had an independent conversation about uh, American Rescue Plan Act dollars. Uh, with all due respect for, to Mr. Gentile, I'm not sure why the mayor's administration is here today. Um, that's not the point of this meeting from my perspective. The point of this meeting is to establish a roadmap going forward for council to establish independent priorities. Uh, the good news is, is our staff has done a lot of work around soliciting feedback from members and putting it together, uh, which is a really great great place to start. Um, again, uh, Mr. Chairman, I've submitted, and this is just a, a, a start of a talking, you know, a start of a conversation around uh, what we, how we can move forward with this, but I would just urge, Mr. Chair, that this body um, really, again, independent of the mayor's administration, have deliberate conversations um, to better understand allowable uses, to better understand the priorities of council members in the community, and to create our own plan that we can then reconcile with the mayor's administration. So, uh, again, um, uh, sitting here uh, just seems we're 50 minutes in, and this just it seems like a conversation around priorities, which is not the point of this meeting. The point of this meeting was to create a process for council to build its own plan to then reconcile with the mayor's administration. So um, that's how I'm gonna leave it, but I support the councilman's motion uh, to create maybe a framework of a summit or, or, or a, a path moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman McCormick. There's a clarity that uh, was asked by Councilwoman Jasmine Santana to make sure that there's a better clarifying to understand the summit process or the framework that Councilman Jones is putting forth and to make sure that we have a clarified um, clarification. Mr. Chair? Motion. Yes, on that point. Would you allow Councilwoman Spencer a on that Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Councilwoman Spencer on that point of regarding you. this summit and this motion. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Further discussion on, on the motion. I wanted to follow up on what Councilman McCormick stated. I think that um, we have a draft roadmap that was, that was uh, sent around last night that I think speaks to the spirit of what Councilman Jones is speaking of in terms of, what, again, whether we call it a summit or a series of meetings, what is the outcome that we need to walk away with? Boy. On the point about, I think, uh, our next meeting, I really do think should be taking the time to do that deep Wait. dive on eligible uses. We have received briefings on that from the administration. I would strongly recommend bringing in an outside subject matter expert. I think while we really appreciate it, Chief Doom is coming in and providing that to us. I think this is so critical that all members of the body are, have a high comfort level with the eligibility. I would just recommend bringing in an outside speaker to walk us through it. And then similarly, again, the reason I'm so supportive of the, the roadmap or the, the outline that was presented by, by Councilman McCormick is because I think ultimately we do want to take the work of our council staff. They compiled all of our feedback by ward. They've also broken it out by, by subject matter into different buckets. I think we should have one more round robin where council members uh, look and make sure that nothing is missing that they'd like to have included for consideration. And then we do. We have to craft our own plan. We have to cross-check our own stated priorities against eligibility. 
and have our own roadmap. So I think, I think we're really close, I think, between what Councilman McCormick circulated and what Councilman Jones uh, has motioned. I think we're really close to, to seeing how we're going to move forward as a body uh, with a shared understanding and with, with really emerging with the priorities of this council. Councilman Polensic has asked a point on your motion. Councilman Polensic. Well, will Mr. Yield. Chairman, what we do allow Councilman Mr. Chairman, I will yield. Councilman Polensic on that point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What we did years ago, we call them working sessions, where we just we sat down and we looked at um, the mechanics of how how can we implement this? How do we do this? The the administration, um, individuals from the administration were brought to those working sessions with documents, with information, so we could interact with them. But it was to get a better understanding, uh, whether it be the budget or whatever the case may be, of what we need to do collectively within a body. So it, it, what, it, when I think of a summit, I think of a much bigger, th no, th this was a working session right. where the members of council sat down and just went over point by point what our priorities were and and attaching a dollar amount with that and then trying to figure out the mechanics and how do we get that done. So if that's what you're talking about and that's what you're proposing, I'm certainly in support of that. And to Councilman Jones, I know you had the floor for the motion. Well, I think that um, eloquently um, my colleague, um, um, uh, Kerry McCormick uh, stated it very well, um, you know, understanding, you know, how these resources can be spent and marrying them with what the priorities of the council is, is significantly important. And also taking in consideration the administration. I do agree with uh, my colleague Jenny Spencer. Uh, as it relates to being able to have an outside facilitator to facilitate these uh, hearings. Uh, or meetings or working sessions. Um, and I think that we should have at least three, three days is, is usually is what it normally took in the past uh, to have a session here and talk about this and really iron it out. I think to rush through these dollars and to spend chunks at a time, 250 million here and 200 some million there and another 100 million over there and council not vet this process out. Um, it says, Mr. Chairman, we're not doing the job that the citizens sent us down here to do. And that is to make sure that we represent uh, their interest and make sure that their interest is brought to the table uh, so that uh, it can be carried out, especially with this one time um, uh, funds that we're receiving right here. We need to make the best of them. And Mr. Chairman, we need to make sure that we put our city, the city of Cleveland, and a strong firm financial stand. Okay. And so that it is in a place where we will be able to move our communities forward. And then at the same time, be able to get some resources and equitable dollars into our neighborhoods to help our citizens. Okay, Councilman, you have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded by Councilman McCormick. Um, and let me make sure I reiterate the motion. The motion is to make sure that we have working groups and a process of summit to rigorously um, review these ARPA dollars and that framework is what you want to make a motion for. I want to make sure I understand is that your motion? The, the motion, Mr. Chairman, is to have um, hearings uh, concerning the, the, the funds, dollars. how they should be spent, okay. and then council coming together as a whole on what they feel are the top priorities. Uh, and of those top priorities, uh, then we marry that with the administration. We bring them back into the hearings at some point to talk about uh, how they come up with uh, the 250 million expenditure that they're talking about so that we can marry our ideals and concepts together to make sure that the people and the citizens of the city of Cleveland have a voice at the table in that process. Okay. There's motions been moved and seconded. I believe that's what we're discussing today. Um, and I believe that is the legislative process. That is what we are actually determining is how we move forward from here today. And, um, I want to reiterate that I think that most of us know that we have to have this kind of engagement, that it can't be just in one meeting or two meetings. It has been outlined um, several suggestions on how we put that framework forward. So um, I'm not sure if that is a clear motion that you guys may have, but I think that um, 
that's what we're really here to try to accomplish is how do we move forward in the decision making process regarding this today and I believe that everybody does agree that it has to be rigorous engagement that it has to be several sessions not one that it can't just be one bite at the apple um, but I want to make sure that I, I just to this point councilman I think that um, the motion that you're putting forward is what I think all of us are trying to move forward or how we do that now on that point and if that's the case then I think that's what we're here for but on that point I think Councilwoman Spencer on has point. a point Bashir. and Councilman uh, Bashir Jones first and then Councilwoman Spencer Councilman Jones thank you so much chair you know this this is something that's extremely important being able to get these resources out to the people and the fact is, is that this specific conversation in this way, it should have been happened. It should have been happened a long time ago. But now we're having this conversation and now we want to have rigorous and a lot of meetings. Well, we could have been doing this. We could have did this months ago. We've been fighting to do this months ago. But now what it sees to me is that this is becoming more political than it is about the people. The people need services right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not we do 10 more meetings and then, no, we got to, people need these situations right now. My residents need their re uh, homes repaired right now. They need their streets fixed right now. So what I want to be clear, in, in, and with all due respect to my friend, Jill Jones, is that as we discuss what steps go on from here, we're not talking about 20 more meetings. We're talking about how do we dispense these resources to the community right now. So, you know, th that's my stance on it, you know, and, and, as, and as a person who's been a voice to, to make sure that we hold people accountable and begin to have this conversation, we were trying to have this conversation months ago. Months ago. And now we're approaching a couple months before, uh, you know, before the new year. And my residents need services today today. I have seniors who are living in abject poverty with roofs that are falling. If these resources can assist right now, that's, that's, that's the way that I want to move it for me and my neighborhood. So, you know, as we talk about moving forward and as I, as I say to, uh, to my, my friend Joe, I'm all for the meeting. I mean, that's what we've been talking about for years here in council. But at some point, now it's the, the rubber meets the road. Let's get these resources out to the people that people need it. And let me say this in closing, as we discuss how these resources are moved out into the community, let's be clear that there are neighborhoods that are in need in ways that some neighborhoods aren't. We have to stop being just people of words and start being people of action. It's easy to talk about racism being a public health crisis but it's harder that when you got a pot of resources right here to dispense the dollars in a way that will uh, resolve some of those issues. So what I'm looking for from, from, my, from my colleagues, I'm looking to see, and I look forward to, to seeing it, because we're going, we're going to expose it, that if this is just talk, and it's not about really putting these resources into neighborhoods that really need those help, as Councilman Conwell talks about since I've been here, since the mayor has been talking about equity, we want to see the same people standing up and fighting, even if it's not the same pain in your neighborhood, that you fight for the pain that's happening in some neighborhoods for those resources to be dispensed into the places that have the most need. And the fact is, is that there are neighborhoods on the east side and parts of the west side, as, as Councilman Mooney brought up very clearly, in parts of Bel Air and others, man, is dealing with abject poverty. So this is not an east side or west side thing. But what we're hoping for from some of my colleagues who have a big voice about how they want to see the money dispensed, that we're hoping that they follow their word and be people who see these resources dispensed in the places hardest hit on the east side and the west side. I'm hoping that it's not just conversation and dialogue, but at the same time, put, put the money where your mouth is and send those resources to where they need to go, to the neighborhoods that are hardest hit. Let's not make this a political, political circus, but let's put resources where the people need them, where the abject poverty is. 
That's what I want to see. And Chair, you know, as far as having 20 more meetings, you know, having a couple more meetings, that's fine, but let's get these resources out to the people. The people deserve it. They need it. They're suffering right now. And they're not in a condition like we are, that we can go weeks and weeks without receiving support. They need support today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Jones. Councilwoman Spencer on that point, and then I'm going to wrap this up with Councilman Mooney, and then we'll move forward. Councilwoman Spencer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is still discussion on the motion, correct? Yes, still a discussion um, on the motion. Thank you. So it, through the chair in response to my, my colleague, uh, Councilman Bashir Jones, I agree for the need with the need for, for due haste, all due haste in this process. But I would put forward to, to my colleagues through the chair that uh, we have, I think all of you received a one page summary that kind of delineates a series of meetings, not to exceed five, and it could be fewer, that I think uh, talking through this briefly now as a group would be a uh, a great use of time to see if we all could agree, is this the series of meetings that we agree to or combining some of the subject matter? But I think it's well thought out and I think it will get us to the outcome of what, what, where we need to be. The only thing I would add to the outline as, as distributed is that um, council staff could help with an analysis of what uh, can be deployed immediately. We had Councilman Plensick earlier raise the question of, of demo. Do we have the capacity to get things out the door right away? Um, so the, the, the question of are we, are we at, at, in a position to immediately deploy dollars or what needs a little bit more, more research. But um, I would just put forward that I, I'm really comfortable with um, not 20 meetings, uh, not 10 meetings, no more than five meetings. Certainly could be accomplished in less than five, but um, I think that reviewing this, this one-page document would be a good use of our collective time this morning. Before I give uh, Councilman Mooney that point, I want to reiterate that the motion on the table was to have a series of meetings or a summit, summit to actually have us drill down on this process. I believe that, um, and I'm going to hear from Councilman Mooney, but as the chair, I would kind of, uh, you know, at least make sure that I'm, I'm making this, the motion clear as we move forward. So Councilwoman, Councilman Mooney. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'll just be brief. I mean, um, I, I think we've had a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of explanations of how we can spend this ARPA money. And if people came to those meetings, we were able to ask Sharon Dumas. I have a pretty good understanding. I'm not saying it's 100% it's clear. I don't know if we need two meetings to further clarify that, but maybe one meeting would be good to go forward. And, and I'm not sure who the outside facilitator is suggested, but I, I'm looking at this, I mean, if I've been through this, we've had the ability to ask that question. So to everybody's point, because I agree with parts of what everybody's saying, I agree with Bashir, I agree with Council Plensick. I want to move forward with some stuff now, and some stuff's not controversial that we should pro probably all agree upon. That can't wait. And it's the stuff that you're talking about, it's the, the fact that our ambulances, uh, that, that I, I know I've mentioned all of you sent them. They, they have over 300,000. It'll take a year and a half to two years to get them. Uh, so let's move on that. Instead of, let's move on that soon because every week we wait is another year and a half to two years from when we can get those. So I mean, I think there's some things that are non-controversial we can move forward with. And I would agree it would be okay with me if we had another meeting where people could understand fully. I don't know if we need two. So, uh, but, but just aside from that, I, I, even if this motion passes, I don't know what the effect of it is. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, what's the effect? Okay, we agree to have meetings. Then still we have to take the next step of calling a meeting. So maybe we should be more specific to the maker of the motion. Let's have a meeting for the topic of discussing, because that's the first meeting you propose, a meeting for the topic of what is permissible for ARPA. Councilman Jones? And so, Councilman Jones, on that point, that, and then I'm going to chime in after I'm Councilman asking you, Jones. It, because Jones. this, this yeah. idea of just cause a series, it really, right. even if it passes, it needs to be more defined. It really means, means nothing other than just the general will to meet more. So, if you want to have a specific meeting, maybe you can make a motion to have a specific meeting very soon to discuss permissible uses with the agreement that we can have other meetings. It's just a suggestion. Councilman Jones sure. on that point. And then I'll I'm not sure that what I'm seeing is right, but I'm bringing it up for discussion. Right. Uh, Thank Ms. you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, to our distinguished colleagues uh, who have had comments here right now talking about this particular subject, we have Mr. Gentile that's across from us. He doesn't have a planned agenda. We've had Mrs. Dumas across us. 
we did not get any information as relates to how they want to spend the 250 million, even though legislation has been proposed. And yet we still don't have any kind of detailed information. Uh, and Mr. Gentile can't go into any particulars here at this table. Uh, there's no clarity on the other side of the table of the administration and how those funds are going to be spent. And as we sit here right now, it would be nice as some of our, our colleagues have stated, let's spend the money where we want to spend it or where we can get it. But we don't even know, Mr. Chairman, if there's even amylances in this uh, whole proposition that's being proposed to us because we don't have the total proposal, nor do we have the breakdown. This council does not, if you went through a process here at the table, including myself, doesn't know all of the uh, allowable uses for this money. As we sit here, we're not thoroughly educated on it. Uh, and we need to be more educated on how those funds are going to be expended, how the, how the uses of those funds should be, and we should be talking about the priorities of our respective territories, and then how we marry that to this administration. And at the end of the day, Mr. Chairman, when you bring, when the money has come from the federal government for this one-time usage, again, we must put our city on a firm financial footing for the future. And that's what this is really all about, is having a thorough session. Um, we can have three or four meetings succinctly in a row. We can start on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, be finished uh, with the council having a thorough understanding of how funds should be used, uh, Mr. Chairman. And then the priorities from our respective citizens should be a part of this process. When we do that, that is called democracy. That is what this is all about Absolutely. here, Mr. Chairman. And so I ask my colleagues, respectively, that we represent our, our representation of our people. We have the responsibility Council. and the urgency of now to take care of that. And Mr. Chairman, I, I, you know, I put that motion on the floor, and um, we need to take care of the business of our people. And I appreciate my colleagues who are here today. So once again, the motion on the table is to have a series of meetings and to have a process to have working groups to deal with this process. Does that motion carry? I've had, it's been moved and seconded. Does that motion carry? Hey, we have, have to, to call, call the roll call. Call. call the roll. All those in favor. All those in favor? All, right, she, chair, all those opposed, do you want to? I'm sorry, Chair. I just need more clarity on it, that motion. I mean, I feel like, okay, can like I, how many? Meetings. What is he asking? This is this is this is and and and, and I, can I be honest with with everybody? Um, the motion is councilwoman and, and and councilman. I don't think people are clear with the motion. The motion is and and I know that you reiterated it. And this motion is to have working groups and the meetings. Now, if that motion is we call the roll, then we will agree on having working groups and a series of meetings to deal with this. We will get into the structural part of how that would look in a moment, but that's, that's what I believe Councilman Jones is has on the table. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and we can work out the date. And we'll work, out the, we'll work out the details, but Councilman Jones has that on the table. And is anybody in favor or anybody opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so we're going to have a series of meetings regarding this. Now here's what I want to reiterate. And I want to bring this back to a suggested. And I do have Mr. McCormick's document, uh, the councilman from Ward 3. It has been proposed to have a working group that will be made up of the chairs of the respective committees. And that these topics will have, will do, go through our legislative process, will be assigned to committees, and then that those committees will then put forth the recommendations that come out of those committees to this working group that will be made up of the chairs and anyone else on council who would like to um, be a part of that. I cannot make that motion as a chair of this committee, but I would like to put structure around this and see if that motion is something that will work and we will work in the dates and times that we have, even if we need multiple committee meetings, um, to align it with what Councilmember McCormick is doing. Question, Chair? Yes. Is there a, a timeline in the sense of it has to be done by this? Is there, are we going to put that in place? Um, Mr. Jones, we can make the motion 
um, fit your context if we can say that these decisions will be made um, if you have a suggested date by when these um, committee meetings as well as this working group needs to have um, the final strategy to us. Do you have a, do you have a recommendation for that? Now that we want to work, let's, let's get it done. So do you have a date or any time? I, I, I mean, I'm just proposing to chair that this gets done in a timely fashion, that this is not something that is okay. being waited upon for weeks, if, even for that matter. So once so, again, I cannot make a motion at this table, but what I will tell everyone is that um, all of these recommendations will go to our legislative process. That is the recommendation I'm making, that it will go to our committees to vet out all of the different categories and that this working group will take those recommendations and give council a final plan that we will deliberate that will be our plan. And we will work to align it with Mr. McCormick's guidelines, but I want to make sure that we leave out of here with clear structure. That to me was what the purpose of this meeting was supposed to be, to accomplish exactly what you're saying, Councilman Jones, to do what you're trying to say, Councilman. Joe Jones to make sure that we have rigorous conversation, that we have a clear timeline, and that we have a clear process. So I put forth a recommendation. I cannot make a motion. Will somebody make that motion? Well, well Mr. Chairman, be, it, though you have the proposition on the, on the table, I, I don't want to make this more complicated than it has to be. I think this is really simple. It's a session of council. Uh, it should be no more than four meetings. We have a session, a summit. We take, we take four days to talk about these dollars um, and we have a, a half a day talking about how they can be spent and Mr. Chairman I don't think we need to pollute it up with a whole lot of committee process. I think that we've done this in the past before very successfully uh, and we have been able to um, run the city and manage the city successfully with having hearings at Burke Lake Airport. Now, Councilman, where we have you made the session, motion earlier. Yeah, I know, but I I'm just. Sure I just your want to motion say, has passed. I know, but and what, what I'm doing is this is a committee. It's if a committee could, process. If you could allow me, I'm putting forth recommendations for how we can structurally accomplish what you're talking about, and what. I think that most people are saying is that they want to have a series of meetings, they want to drill down in these, and they want council to have their own independent plan. I'm trying to make this work for everybody. I understand that you want everybody to go to Burke Lakefront Airport and have a discussion for four or five days. I put out something that I believe is a process that we all have done that we can get results and that would give clear structures and framework, which is what I believe the authors of the folks that called this meeting would like to do. Mr. Chair, if I to that point, Councilman McCormick and Thank then you. Councilwoman Gray, but Councilman McCormick, please. Thank go you, ahead. Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you steering this conversation towards a result. I really do. I think it's it's important. So, um, and Mr. Chair, on that point, I think it's a really good idea. I like the idea of a working group of council, um, holistically, that can go through a process and nail that down. I agree that I think it should have some framework. Um, again, what I put in front of folks today, I, I'm not saying it's the Bible, right? But it just it says to understand eligible uses, to go through the uh, uh, feedback we've already received on council priorities and really bringing those together, comparing them to the mayor's administration, and then coming out with a final plan. I think it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, we have five meetings. It could probably be four. It does not need to stretch any longer than it needs to be. Um, so if this type of structure, if members think that this is a generally a good roadmap on how we can arrive at a more clear understanding, you know, married with the idea of having that working group and having feedback from committees, Mr. Chair, I think that that um, is a good roadmap forward. So the, the one in front of us, again, it calls for five meetings. It doesn't need to be five meetings. It could be less if, if, if folks feel like that. Or it could be a series in, within a, uh, a summit, right? So I just wanted to say that uh, what was in front today, I think, achieves that goal. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. McCormick. And, and if you want, if don't mind, I believe that your goals that you have outlined in this could be accomplished by the working group that you also believe is a good step to put in place. Yes. The only other step that I think I want to make sure that we adhere to is that we make sure that we have a committee process because as Councilman Mooney said, there are some deep things that we need as a safety committee to look at to make sure we identify, similar to yep. health, similar yep. to DPS. So I would ask if our committees can make a deep dive into those buckets as Councilwoman Spencer so eloquently talked about and then let the working group actually follow your schedule 
so that that working group can make sure they keep us on track. Lastly, I would like to make sure we adhere to Councilman Jones' point. I don't want to put out an arbitrary time period, but I believe that this 133rd council has the right to deliberate over these dollars and not kick it to the next administration. So I believe that we should make de decisions or determinations and have a deadline for um, recommendations. I would pivot to Councilman Jones if he can give us some idea of when he believes it should be a deadline for us to have all recommendations for council to have a complete plan. Councilman Jones? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will certainly... Um, I have uh, Councilman Bashir Jones. Then I'll okay. come back to you, Councilman Joe Jones. Councilman Bashir Jones. Thank you. I'm, it's, this week, Friday, <laughs> I mean, if you said four days, let's start by tomorrow. And let's get it done by Friday. To that point with Councilman Jones, I think there are other things that we might need to get some more clarity on that might take a little longer than that, just in, 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 in I'm not sure if uh, administration or anybody else on council, but I do believe to your point and to Councilman Polensic's point earlier, that there are some urgent things that we need to hurry up and get out the door that we need to find out that are shovel ready. I believe that that is something that the working group should take up and if that is your recommendation, the low hanging fruit with that working group, those items should be identified. And if that group wants to convene today and give us some recommendations on early um, things, we know that there's a plan for broadband. That's why we set aside 20 million. We know that the food bank is feeding people. We can look out our doors and see the million life. So we know that there's some demolition that we already do, as Councilman Polensic said. I think that that committee, that working group, should be able to take on that charge. And I'm asking, this body to do that, to Councilman Jones' point. I do share that sense of urgency, but I would believe that that working group made up of those chairs and that in this council that wants to be a part of that working group, and Councilman Joe Jones is also welcome to be a part of it, should um, set forth those goals and those guidelines. Mr. Chairman, on that point? On that point, yeah, um, I, I believe I have Councilwoman oh, Santana and then Councilman McCormick. I, and this is just a request, uh, Mr. Chair. Can we get the um, data on like the top items of how people were impacted in our city so that we could align our requests with how the people were impacted? Okay, um, Mr. Gentile, do you have anything similar that you can provide of that magnitude? <laughs> Um, I'm, I want to, I believe, to rephrase the councilwoman's request. Maybe that's what the only thing I think that we could probably have is the input that I believe 100 citizens gave to say what were the top yeah. to, to the chair priorities. Of the, to the chair of the council, yeah, we have the input that was at the rock centers, the mail in and online uh -huh. uh, citizen input because it's, re, it's required by this grant uh, okay. as a compliance to send something out to the public. Um, so we have in bro pretty broad categories because a lot of people had, had different yeah. ideas. So we have some numbers that we can get on okay. that survey as to what the general public that right. responded you know, was interested in. Thank you so much, uh, Councilman. I mean, thanks so much, Mr. Gentile. I do want to make sure that everybody cognizes it before I go to Councilman McCormick, that whenever we do the public's business, public notice and other things have to be in place. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to put a framework where we actually do this through a committee process and this working group, because we have to adhere by the sunshine laws and make sure that everything that we do is fully transparent. Councilman McCormick, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just uh, for my edification, the proposal that we're looking at right now is to have a working group cross council that will follow some sort of guidelines to develop a global plan for council that will be informed by detailed committee work as well. Is that correct? That's what I'm suggesting, Mr. McCormick. Okay, I just want to be on record that I, Mr. Chairman, that I support uh, that approach moving forward. Okay, so Councilman McCormick, um, would you be willing to put forth the motion so that we can find this discussion? Mr. Chair, I move that uh, we establish a working group of Cleveland City Council that's comprised of chairs as well as anyone else that's interested in being on that group that follows uh, a plan uh, that will under, uh, inform members about the allowable uses, create council's unique plan uh, of priorities, uh, reconcile those with the mayor's administration, and then put forth a final proposal. Um, this work, Mr. Chairman, would be informed by uh, committees of council that would take deep dives into uh, the issues in front of us. Mr. Chairman, this work would also be done in, in a, this work would, uh, 
take the time needed while also taking into consideration that we would not uh, drag this on or delay this work for any reason, um, understanding that we'll take the time needed to develop this plan. Do I have a second um, to well, Councilman McCormick? To that point, what's the timeline? He didn't say a timeline. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, I don't think it's, it, to your point, Mr. Chair, I don't think it's appropriate for us to establish a specific timeline right now. So that, that's, Ms. that's exactly I'm sorry, the Mr. Chair. Do I have the on one second, one second, please, everybody. Yeah. Um, Mr. McCormick will finish and then Councilman yeah. Jones. So, I will take any suggestions if you want to amend his motion after it's seconded. But right now, please finish your motion, Councilman McCormick, and then we'll have a second, and then we'll go to discussion. M Councilman McCormick, please Thank finish you, your point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to your point, Mr. Chairman, earlier, maybe perhaps having that first working group meeting established and build a, a timeline might be prudent versus coming at, to, you know, creating one on the fly right now. <clears throat> Councilman Jones. And first of all, before Councilman Jones has a discussion on this point, do I have a second to Councilman McCormick's point? I'll do, second. Okay, so Councilman Jasmine Santana. Now we're into discussion. And I have Councilman Jones, and then I also have Councilman Slife. Councilman Jones, and then Councilman Charles Slife. Councilman Bunch With all Jones. that being said, a timeline needs to be established. When will this, when is the, we are all brilliant people. When would we have a plan to get this done, to have done? In reality, if everybody was at the table, we could sit down for a full day and get this whole thing done. It's not gonna take a million years for us to understand how things get done, how money is supposed to be spent. It doesn't take that long to understand that. And in actuality, this whole year, we've been dealing with COVID for, for over a year now. So we know the issues that our community is going through. We already know now what someone is going through in their community may be different than what's going on in my community. And you bring that forward. We sent emails, we had conversation, we had dialogue. So what I'm saying, Chair, is that what we need to do is establish it won't go past this time. This, is, this, shouldn't, this shouldn't have to take two weeks, three weeks, a month to get done. We can get this done sooner. So what I'm saying is I'm asking my colleagues to take a look at what's being asked and let's come up with a timeline or when we gonna, how we gonna commit ourselves to making it happen. Okay, um, Councilman Jones, I think Councilman Slife has the floor and then uh, we're in discussion about Councilman McCormick's um, uh, motion. Thank Councilman you, Mr. Slife. Chair. And you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with us setting a goal of, of a three week series of meetings. And the reason that I say three weeks is this. It is, I understand it's not as urgent as we may like, but I, I believe there's a lot of outstanding questions uh, just from every angle for, and I think that what we need is maybe a couple days a week for us to spend time amassing questions to council staff that they can then go take to the administration. So when we do sit down in these sessions, we have definitive information that we've requested from the administration that allows us to analyze, you know, our goals better. For example, you know, I have a real fear or anxiety that what's being proposed from the administration is block grant 2.0. And bluntly, I don't think that over 40 years. Block Grant has done a lot of great things for people, but it has not necessarily moved the needle in many of our neighborhoods. It's also administratively burdensome to spend. So I, I, I want what we use these dollars for to be different. Therefore, I am, and I will request this in writing, but I would like to know, you know, what coming out of the mayor's proposal is and is not Block Grant eligible and almost a Venn diagram. It kind of builds off of the idea that Councilman Polensic said of understanding what can be spent with general funds, what can be spent with enterprise funds. I think we need time to take those questions, to be thoughtful, to allow staff to bring that information back to us, and that our meetings will be more successful if we've taken just those couple days to do that. Um, so that'll be my request of, of the, those who made the motion, if we could put a three-week um, goal on if we have to go a little further, if we wrap up sooner, I, you know, it's all going to be good. Uh, something I do have, and I'll just offer this to everyone, I took one of the papers from uh, Chief Dumas that outlined kind of broadly the goals, and I turned it into a chart for myself, uh, just so I could kind of take notes next to um, what we understand the eligible uses to be. And I did that because there was, when we initially put down our wish lists, I think that was before we understood the totality of the requirements. For example, I wanted street resurfacing, but you can't just do street resurfacing, it has to be tied to a utility project. So if anybody would like a copy of something like this as a thought exercise leading into these series of meetings, I've got about 20 of them in my bag right now, I'm happy to provide them. Uh, so that's just a bit of an aside, but my request to those making the motion would be a timeline of three weeks. So uh, 
Thank you so much, Councilman Slife, and please share that with everybody on council. I'm pretty sure all of us can utilize that document. I know, the point motion that point, on the chair. table, just to Councilman Jones' point and Councilman Slife's point, they're asking, if I'm hearing clearly, to make an amendment to your motion, Councilman McCormick, and in three weeks, and I'm being generous because it actually goes a little further than three weeks, according to Councilman Slife and hearing from Councilman Jones that they would recommend that council and this working committee, after hearing from the different committees, um, the uh, sitting council committees, will have a recommendation to the entire body by November the 1st, according to the three weeks that Councilman um, Slife put in place. Is that appropriate amendment to your motion? Can, I, can, I, ask, uh, can I ask a question, Chair? Um, real quick, I will come right back to you, Councilman Jones. I do want to understand if Councilman McCormick is acceptable Th to that amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd be happy to amend my motion to reflect that the work of this working group be completed by November 1st. Okay. Thank you so much, Councilman McCormick, that amendment, and Councilman Jones. You have a point. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on clarification. One second. I have Councilman Bashir Jones, and then I'll come back to you, Councilman Joe Jones. Councilman Bashir. I want to respond to Councilman's life. L let me just, if I can ask a question from the chair to the councilman. For everything that you just said, could that be done in one day if the administration was sitting at the table and answering those questions? I guess personally, I'd be skeptical. Skeptical it could happen in one day, just because of background research. You know that there might not be answers on the, the tip of someone's tongue as to whether or not this is is or is not block grant eligible, for example. But it, it certainly could happen in a course of days. I would right. suppose. So the, the point I'm making, Chair, even with three weeks, and I appreciate that, and I and I guess we're still kind of talking it through, which is fine. But if we had the administration and everyone who had the answers and all of council at the table. It wouldn't take three, even three weeks to get that stuff done. I mean, it literally can be done in one week if everyone, I mean, it could be done quicker than that. Many of us here, we went to school, we graduated, we can get things done when we want to get things done. If everyone was at the table, we were able to ask Chief Dumas and anyone else who had the knowledge and wisdom, hey, and, all, and these are all important questions that Councilman Slife is asking, they will be able to answer it right then and there. That's number one. The second thing is, us having to go back to our community to understand the needs of our, we already know the needs of our community. We already know, that's why we sent a bunch of emails to Joe explaining, or to John James explaining what are the specific concerns. So the thing that the administration came up with here um, that the money is going to is based upon the things that we sent in. Now, if we want to be even more specific than that, that's fine, we have a right to do that. But what I'm saying that we could get that done even quicker than three. So what I'm suggest what I, I make a motion. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to make a motion at this time. Is that part of Robert? Um, we're in discussion. We're in discussion. And the amendment was made to Councilman McCormick. But just for your point, um, to on that point, if you allow me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On that point, I believe this committee has the leverage to do it faster than November the first in those three weeks. So the point being is that if this committee does convene, they can do it before then. Right. We just don't want it to go past right. November the 1st. And, and, I, what I, and what I would like, Chair, just for my colleagues to, to consider, because this is something we've been think, talking about for a long time, is that we do have a timeline to get these funds out of the door, all right? or at least dedicated right, by 2024. I mean, it has to, all funds have to be dedicated and have to be spent out by 2026. Is that correct? Sir. Yeah, to, to, uh, council, uh, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Gentile. Gentile. Yeah, uh, to, the, to the chair, to the councilman, yes. So they have to be committed by December 31, 2024. They have to be fully expended by December 31, 2026. Right. So, so this is a, a righteous cause that we want to make sure that the funding is spent in a way that will truly elevate this city. Right. So we all, I think that we all agree on that. But what I'm saying is that Let's get where we can, and I believe the mayor is, is, is behind getting these resources out. We want to make sure that the resources uh, are spent in a way, because we understand that within the administration, we have had issues in the past of dispensing dollars. So all of this is, is correct in a sense. But now that we're saying, hey, let's sit down, let's make it a working group, it doesn't need to take three weeks for us to do that. 
Uh, it doesn't need for us to take a month for us to do that. We can get that done a lot quicker if we dedicate ourselves, sit down, and if the administration, whoever has the answers, can also sit down with us, we can get all our answers, uh, uh, questions answered, we can bring everything that we want to get done in our community, all right, and we have everyone at the table. I think the problem that we've been having is that everybody hasn't been at the table. So people have been making decisions without everyone's input. So now that we have everybody willing to be at the table, let's bring them to the table and let's get it done. So Chair, I, I'm, I just want to just put that out to the, my colleagues is that it doesn't have to take three weeks. It can take a dedicated week and we can have this all figured out. So to the councilman's point, and I appreciate you, Councilman, you really did lay out a lot of um, decision-making points that got us to this point. And to the councilman's point, I know that um, Councilman McCormick has made an amendment to his um, motion, and I would just like to add, if so, that it can be on or before November the 1st. And then that way, to Councilman Point, is if this group gets together and finds out that we can do it uh, through our public meeting process and everything by this week, I think all of us would be happy. Um, but I just want to make sure that we say either on or before November the 1st. Councilman McCormick, are you agreeable to that? Yeah, Mr. Mr. thank Chair. you, Mr. Chairman. Do, um, do, I think my language was the, the work of the committee should be completed by, so I think we're saying the same thing. Okay, thank you, Councilman McCormick. <laughs> Councilman Joe Jones, and then I'll come back. Councilman Joe Jones. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, it's, and I understand the sense of urgency now. This is a process we would have liked to have seen happen back in April, but that didn't happen. And again, we have information that we don't have before us. We, we don't have um, any information from the administration of their breakdown. And I think to rush a $500 million discussion within uh, a time period of this month, given the fact, Mr. Chairman, that many of us are campaigning. Yeah. Go ahead, Councilman. It's not 500, it's 200. Go ahead, Councilman. The discussion is about the whole 500 allotment and how it should be spent. And so, Mr. Chairman, I just think to try to rush this in during a period of time where all of the council members are actually in campaigns in their respective territories is really in its nature um, not the right space and time. So, Mr. Chairman, I just think that the committee and the body, of course, you know, I'd yield to my members, to, I'll, I'll yield to my colleagues. Uh, on this subject matter, but it's something that needs to be deliberated. Right. It's something that needs to be well thought out. And when we bring our proposal forward, uh, we have a clear agenda, and, and it's an agenda that represents all of the Thank best you, interests of our, our neighborhoods and our city. So I don't think that, Mr. Chairman, we should rush this process. Thank you, Councilman. So we have, um, we have a motion on the floor that's been motioned, moved, and seconded. I'm now going to ask all in favor. Can, can I get clarification, Chair? I'm sorry. Just yes, one more time. I'll be, sure. make it quick. When you say by November 1st, what are we saying will be done by no November 1st? Okay. Mm -hmm. What are we saying, if we can just use the date of November 1st, what are we saying will be done by November 1st? That council will have a process where they will go through the committees. The committees will make, a rec make recommendations to the working group. The working group will have <laughs> something before council that we will all be able to um, um, deliberate on by November the 1st to have move forward what our um, goals would be for the ARPA dollars. So that's not that's not a com that's not a completion of everything. That's just that's when we'll be done with our process. That's when we'll be done with our process, and then what we would have to do is make sure that we move it through the legislative, and make sure that that is done. But our process for this for the purposes of what um, everybody would like to see, our process will be done on or before November the first. So just to be clear, resources won't be moved to our communities. And whatever it is that we, you know, these things that we're talking about, rental expenses, mortgage, blah, 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 blah. These things won't be reached to the people by November 1st. We will just be done with our process by November 1st. And then it could take another couple months or by next year before dollars reach those who need it the most. Is that That's something saying? that we would have to discuss with the administration to make sure that we understand when and how dollars will get out the door. But our process and our commitment to where we believe, council believes, the dollars should be allocated and spent will be done under this motion by November the 1st. Okay, I want to make a new motion, Chair. 
All right, thank you so much. So the motion has been moved and seconded. Um, I'm gonna ask for all in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Opposed. Okay, so we have um, one opposed. The ayes have it, okay? We're going to move forward and I believe I have Kevin Conwell on the uh, agenda. And please note that, John James, what uh, we just discussed, so that we can make sure we have that in writing to all council members. And I'd also ask that you take Mr. McCormick's um, schedule and plan so that the working group can um, closely align with um, the strategy that they put forth, okay? Thank you. Um, I, do I have anybody else besides Councilman Conwell on the agenda? Do I have anybody else besides Councilman Conwell on the agenda? Councilman Mike Polensic, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Uh, if I may, obviously there's a lot of work, Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues, there's a lot of work that has to take place. Um, so I, wa I wanna say to the administration, um, you folks need to start working like now, putting together data for us. Mm -hmm. Good example, mm -hmm. each one of us should have a list if we were to plug money into demolition today to provide each of us a list of what properties you would be able to address in each of our communities, the top, the top 10, the top worst 20, whatever it may be, and how quickly those could come down. So what, I, so what I'm saying through the chair to the administration, you've got to be able to put together the numbers for us. The, seniors, the senior housing program, uh, Director Mary McNamara is going to be able to tell us if we plug additional money in, how many additional homes could we do in what period of time? Mm -hmm. How long would it take? We need those kind of numbers. We need to really drill down so when the council meets, we have some uh, expectations on what we can deliver. That's the, my, my whole thing is about the delivery of the service to our citizens. We need to understand. So you have got to do your, your work on every area that you have presented to us where you want to uh, uh, direct funds to, cameras, how quick can we put up cameras? What each one of them gonna cost? Where would they go? Those are the things we need to start having now. So Mr. Chairman, I would hope through you and the council president that it would be made very clear. And then also the last point is the mo we are taking a portion of the 255 that we know already and directing it into the general fund to cover uh, losses, correct? To the chair, to the councilman, yes. The, okay. the rub loss recovery. Then we need to know again where, where individual department divisions, where those funds have gone, and then that goes into the whole issue with uh, fund balances. We need to understand what are our fund balances after we plug those dollars in to cover our losses. So I can't stress enough, Mr. Chairman, if we're going to meet and we don't have the information from the administration, there's gonna be a lot of frustration at the table. We need, they need to be a partner in this process. I can't stress that enough. When we had the working sessions in the past years on issues, the administration was a part of the process. That's right. So we knew, we, we, had, the, we had the dollar amounts. We knew what the, the mechanics were to get, try to get something done. So I can't stress that enough. The last thing for us to do is to meet and then be frustrated because we don't have data or information. So Councilman Polensic and the rest of this body, I'm asking if you have specific requests regarding what data you need and also other requests, because I also hear you saying about how fast can some of these things get done. I'm asking that you give that to John James okay. so that he can share with the administration so that we can make sure whatever data points we need, um, I believe Councilwoman Santana asked the same thing earlier, whatever data points we need, but I'd ask that we work closely on not just ward-based but also buckets, which I believe is very critical and important so that we can make sure that we understand how we're deliberating on this for the entire city and not try to make this into being a myopic exercise about just what's happening in my ward. Um, so I ask that everybody get those data points to um, Mr. Genta, I mean to um, John James. John James will synthesize it, make sure that we all get it, and then we will also get it to the 
administration so that we can have the outcome that we'd like to see. I also want to make sure that I had, uh, who else did I have? I think I had Councilman Joe Jones. Oh, yeah, sorry, General. Councilman Kevin Conwell, but Councilman Polensic will do that. And thank Councilman you. Kevin Conwell. I'm fine. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman me. Kevin Conwell. Thank you very much. To the chair, to. Um, I would love to have the administration come to my uh, to my ward to talk with my residents. So who's leading this uh, or who's championing this project through the chair? Uh, to, the, to the chair, to the councilman, I mean, this is going through uh, Chief Dumas and the finance department. So I need to uh, reach out to Chief Dumas. Is that what you're saying? To the chair, to the councilman, I would start with that, yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll give her a call. I'm not finished. Um, I was listening to uh, Council Member uh, Michael Polensic and Council Member Barsha Jones, and they were saying that we need to put some things out there right now. But, but here's, here's my biggest concern. Uh, there's a lot of programs and there's a lot of projects that the city implements. But guess what? We don't execute. You just talked about cameras. You have cameras in my, in my community and in your community also, Council Member Barsha Jones, that the police don't even pull down to monitor. I don't want to waste dollars and put cameras there and you don't, you don't use them. I don't want to put programs out there dealing with housing or lead issues and we don't use them. The main thing is that we have to have a culture of executing you put, you put the, uh, the money for the lead program, you put together programs, you put together structures and systems, you put together timelines so that we can execute. And then you bring back to council every quarter, quarterly strategy reviews. That's what should be happening every quarter. Not, I don't just wanna see, I wanna know. And you should bring it to council every quarter this is where we're at with the lead programs. This is where we're at on hiring police officers. Uh, if, we, if we said we're gonna hire 1,000 police officers, no, let's say 300 police officers, but we're not there. Here's the reason why we're not there. You let us know ahead of time. You know, you see what I'm saying? I don't wanna see it. I wanna know where we're at. I want you to bring us back strategy reviews so that we know, and with a plan on how we can get to where we need to be. That's how you spend money. That's how you spend money. Don't come back to me saying we want to put some programs out there and you put the money out there for the programs and then it just stay there. Council Member Mike Polensic, you could put a million dollars somewhere and, it, and they never move on it. Never move on it. You walk away, Council Member Mike Polensic to the chair and you say we have a million dollars put out because you just mentioned shelter poverty dealing with houses in the community and you want to get it done, but you only end up with four, four homes being rehabbed. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Money just sitting there and it could go out there to the people. So you got to put together plans, you have to put together projects, and you have to bring to a city council, if you say you're putting, putting the dollars out there the 1st of January, then by April, this is where we're at. This is where we're at with the people money. And what Councilman Barsha Jones said they need it now. Man, I've seen City Hall put together projects and programs and the money just sit there. You know what I'm talking about, Councilmember Barsha Jones. You tell your residents that we're going to rehab homes and it's just sitting there. So you got to bring back to Finance Committee. With me, I'll vote for, for, for projects, but I want to know the people that is out there, not just on the east side. It's, Councilmember Barsha Jones mentioned, but also, now you mentioned compliance, and I yield to you with, um, with that. Yeah. To, the chair, out. to the chair, to the councilman. Uh, with this federal grant, there is, mon there is compliance, so if you have to spend the money with accordance with, with certain guidelines, and if you don't, there'll be a finding recovery that you have to pay out of the general fund. Now, these are pretty broad guidelines, but there are guidelines, just like with any federal grant. Um, Number two, one of, the, one of the compliance was the public outreach. It was required to outreach to the public, which, which we did on several different avenues with the, at the rock centers at City Hall, mailers through the Waterville to, to um, Cleveland residents, 
So we did the outreach. The other, another piece of the compliance is reporting. On our website and on the federal website, everyone that got ARPA money is required to report quarterly what yeah, that's where you're it's supposed at. to be so, quarterly. One second. One second. So counsel. in August was the first um, was the first required report. Now we didn't expend any money at that time, but there's a report on the city's website and on the federal site that shows you know the amount and it shows all the categories. And as we expend money, you know when we have to uh, put that report out there. And again, it's required. It's required to be on the city website. It's required to be on the federal website. And you will have to fill that in. And you also have to, whatever programs you're doing, there's an effectiveness test to them. So that they will be, it's not just spend the money and hope you have results. They're going, you have to show effectiveness in these programs, that mm -hmm. they're meeting mm -hmm. the requirements mm -hmm. of the grant. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, uh, you know, this, there's, they're out there. These are the requirements. Uh, we're in the process. That's why we're having some professional services to help us make sure we comply. Make sure we're in compliant, in compliance, because we don't want to have a finding for recovery. You know, the last thing we want to do is spend this money and then the Fed show up and say you have to return general fund money to back this up. So we're being cautious. We're vetting the, the eligibility of all these expenses, and we're, we will meet all the reporting requirements that are required by the grant. And you know what, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Council. You know we're funders. Uh, listen to, uh, we don't hire people. Like you mentioned, Councilmember Mike Palencic, but we are funders. And in August, in August, you know, they should have gave us a copy of the compliance. I mean, you, you're telling me that we're going to have compliance built into all the projects and the programs, but council being funders, we're funders, man. We're over the dollars. Um, count, uh, um, council, council Member Blaine Griffin, we should have had a copy of this back in August and you wouldn't have to have, or people wondering what directions that we're going right now. So we need to have that to the chair. And uh, um, chairman, if he can give the dollars to uh, maybe uh, uh, John James or something like that, not the dollars, but the, um, um, the evaluation, it's called an evaluation with the compliance. If he could give it to um, John James, and I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So do you have the compliance, uh, Mr. Gentile? Uh, to the chair, to the council. And yeah, it's, it's, on the, it's on both sites, but we can get a copy. We'll Could you please get a copy to um, Mr. James? Sure. Okay. sure. And no councilman, problem. to that point, mm -hmm. I will tell you that I've been watching this um, close, as right. well as um, there's an outstanding document that I've been following from Cleveland Neighborhood Progress. Um, Ed Stockhausen, who is their government affairs person, has really given outstanding updates on the documents as well. So um, the guidelines have changed a lot, and at first there was it was pretty ambiguous. They didn't have, they had a lot of different things, um, you know. So that's one thing that you know the guidelines really weren't clear um, until probably mid July. They changed a couple of times. So I do know the administration did come a couple of times, but um, I would also encourage you to look at some of the documents that uh, Mr. Stockhausen has sent us because he's been really doing a good job of monitoring But, that but you know what, uh, Mr. Chairman, the administration mm -hmm. should give us counsel because we're the funders. Absolutely. Compliance. I agree. And then when Council Member Joe Jones is talking about creating a framework, you create the framework from Mm -hmm. Your compliance, right? True. To the council right. chair, but I'm it looking gives, at it gives you the evaluation process, mm -hmm. and that's how you hit your goals and objectives, sir. But just but without the compliance, uh -huh. I'm almost finished. Sure. Without without that compliance, he should have told us that's in the outstart, right. right here at the table. Because then, when we have working meetings, when we read the compliance, then we know what we know where they're going to in their direction. Right. So, and, and I hear you, Councilman, but just to your point, so received update FAQ from Treasury 623. Mm -hmm. Received another updated FAQ from the Treasury 714 uh, from the Treasury. So the Treasury was updating and, and doing what Washington does, right. you know, building their plane as it's 90,000 feet up in the air too. And that's what has caused a lot of adjustments. But um, also what he said that I think was extremely important is that part of the follow-up guidelines stated that you had 
to go out to the public and get input and solicit input from the public. That wasn't so, done so, until so like me, August. Let me give you so a point. Let that. me give you a point. So sure. every quarter, what should happen, Mr. Chair, is that since the public, they're putting input. Is that correct? The public gave input and online input was turned off August the 13th. So they're stakeholders. And since they're stakeholders, they should get a, a progress update also. True. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Mr. Chair, the councilman, it, this will be on the website and it'll be on the the city website, and re, uh, the federal website as required. So it has to be out there. And it's a progress of the spend, and there's some effectiveness measures to these sure. programs. It, it will be out there because it's required to be. But can you make sure that we get it to councilman uh, sure. to John James yeah, part of councilman's I'll request? Get, yeah, I'll get the August sure. one. To the councilman, chair. anything else um, before we close up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, I like the what um, councilwoman uh, Spencer was narrating. We're going to need an expert when you put together project teams. You need expert opinions so we can do feedback and they can tell us and. And they can also narrate to us what's going on in other cities, what they're doing, because they, they'll look at lessons learned. So you need that expert in the compliance, and we need an expert, and we put together a project team, and we, and we have milestones to hit where we're going. Councilman, I believe you're going to be part of that oh, yeah, project team and that I'm working team. I'm what I would encourage you and the team to do is give mm -hmm. us um, the guidelines that that team develops as their milestones and benchmarks. As yeah, yeah, John, I'm, I'm there 100 percent. OK, talk with the council president. Thank you. It. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Councilman. Great compliance. points. Have thank you. Uh, Councilman Charles Slife. And then I believe I don't have anybody else and we could. Uh, uh, just one very quick question while we have Mr. Gentile. Uh, has the administration reached out to uh, Cleveland Municipal Court about any uh, needs that they may have related to COVID? Mr. Gentile. So, Chair of the Councilman, yes, the, the courts have submitted uh, some requests. We got those kind of late in the process, I think. Um, okay. If we could receive a copy of that as well, I think that that's something we should be building into Mr. our Mr. Gentile, can you please make sure that we have a copy of that um, per the record to John James? Uh, uh, to the thank chair, you. yes. So thank okay. you. And, and, and with that, Mr. Chair, I just say thank, thank you for chairing this. Thank you to everyone for coming. I'm excited and optimistic about this process. And uh, I think this is what we were hoping for uh, when this was announced last Monday. So thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman. I just want to close this meeting by saying that I agree completely with Councilman Jones. There's been a lot of footwork that has been done, um, both of the Jones brothers. Um, uh, there's been a lot of footwork that's been done. I think we're at the point where we are very close to being able to make some decisions. Um, I think there's a little bit more clarity. Uh, I will tell you that you know the, there are some low-hanging fruit that we have to deal with. Uh, we know that during this pandemic, there's two things that we know that this entire council and this entire city really saw as a priority. One was food insecurity. And we know that we have to make sure that we put the infrastructure in place so that we can get more food to our neighborhoods because those lines are still long. So we knew we had to move fast. We also know that there are, you know, significant plans working with the Digital Equity Coalition and others around, um, you know, a broadband issue. We know during COVID-19 that broadband issue and that divide has been elevated to the point that we know that we have to do something around connectivity in an urgent manner. There's nine people, I believe, around this table that are benefiting from um, some digital equity initiatives already. And we know that that's going to be critical. Let's face it, everybody, we're not out of COVID yet. And we still are in this. And part of these funds are to make sure that we position our communities uh, so that if we are hit with this crisis again, or if we continue to be amidst this crisis, that our communities can be sustainable and thrive and come back better. So I really encourage all of us to work close together on this. And also to Councilman Joe Jones' point, I think we're going to spend as much time as we need to make sure that we get this right. I think that this council really needs to work close together. And I'd ask to Councilman Bashir Jones, I'm, I'm quoting the Jones brothers today, that we do not allow the worst kind of politics to divide this council. At the end of the day, we're going to have to work close together, and it's going to be some tough conversations, but we're going to have to work together and make sure that we have the outcomes that we want um, for this city and our, and our residents. So thanks, everybody. This committee, this special committee is adjourned. <laughs>